If you are offended by crude language or by discussions about human sexuality, please quit watching this video now. Or, if you have children in the room whom you want to keep ignorant, please remove them now, so that they will be forced to learn about human sexuality and language usage from peers. Hi, Dendrophilian. I'm Microsoft Agent Mandy and I'm speaking for Rhetorica Monkey's dad in response to your video, Porn Coma. During the child's first two years of life, the neurological pathways and synaptic connections for vision develop. And if something prevents the development of vision, say for instance cataracts during the developmental stage, the individual will forever be blind. By blind I mean that the individual might be able to see swirls of light and color once the cataracts are removed, but the brain will not be able to decipher the sensory input it receives from the eyes. Language acquisition is similar in the sense that neurological pathways and synaptic connections develop. However, no special training is necessary during the development of sight, whereas language is somewhat like a conditioned reflex. Cooing and crying are part of the repertoire of reflexive vocalizations in newborns. And vocal music may even be part of that repertoire, since we humans seem to have an instinctive appreciation of music. But language itself is foreign. Therefore, newborns must be trained to imagine certain things and feel certain emotions when certain words are spoken. And this training must take place during the first 10 years of the child's life, from what I understand, which is supposedly the developmental stage of language. Thus, the neurological pathways and synaptic connections for language must be established during the language developmental stage or the ability to learn and use language will forever be lost. So far we've delved slightly in vision and language development. Now let us delve slightly into human psychosexual development. Phil Donahue once asked a homosexual who was appearing on his show, When did you first realize you are homosexual? The man replied that at the time of his birth he remembered looking down between his legs and wondering, Oh my god, what is that? I brought this up, because some people actually believe such nonsense as a child using human language for thought immediately after birth. So rather than us having to deal with such silliness, maybe all YouTubers can agree on at least one fact concerning human sexuality. And that fact is the healthy human being, one who hasn't been made ignorant of the sensation, at times experiences sexual hunger. Now I'm not saying all humans experience sexual hunger. There are a few abnormal individuals in the world who never have the sensation, just as there are some who have a much stronger sensation than the average person. Can we agree on that fact? For anyone who questions the validity of this postulation, all you have to do is note the number of people in the world who are having sex not to have children, but to satisfy their sexual hunger. In fact, most children born into the world are a consequence of people satisfying their sexual needs instead of trying to have babies. And let me advise those who may jump to the false conclusion that I'm using the logical fallacy of appealing to popularity. I'm not appealing to popularity but pointing out observable phenomena. There you have it, hunger. It is part of the repertoire of sexual reflexes. Now, what establishes the individual's neurological pathways and synaptic connections for satisfying sexual needs? Unfortunately, human sexuality has been thoroughly discombobulated. So, in order to figure out the answer to the question at hand, we need to examine how the individual learns to satisfy another form of hunger, the growling stomach. My father, before he passed away, told me that, when I was a toddler, the only thing my family could get me to eat was home-cooked squash. My father said he was discouraged once, because I wouldn't eat anything else. So he made a face and sounds, as if he were nauseous and said, you, that looks like baby poop. According to my father, I never ate squash again. Of course, as an adult, I've tried squash. And I like it fried but boiled the way Granny and Mom used to cook, and no matter who the cook is, it always seems to have an odd taste. So basically I had an instinctive taste for boiled squash. My herd instinct, or whatever you want to call it, via stimulation from my father, modified the instinctive taste I had. If you look around the world you will see lots of foods that the average American couldn't stomach. While at the same time, when you compare the US to India, you will see we have many foods that the average Indian finds repulsive. While I was growing up, my family moved back and to several times from the big city to the country. In the country, we had no electricity, thus no refrigerator. Meat on the dinner table was usually fish or fresh killed game. Squirrel, rabbit, gopher, quail, and raccoon were most common. The tastes I acquired at that time were based on how I learned to satisfy my needs. 
And I've learned from personal experience that, when you get hungry enough, and you're receiving encouragement, you'll eat anything eatable. The time frame for development of taste for different foods is probably a lifelong process, or at least much longer than the development of sexual tastes. Although, I will admit, I've heard of some people getting kind of freaky in older age. Besides, the process of developing a taste for certain foods usually doesn't suffer the displays of nausea and repugnance, as does one's developing sexual tastes. Nevertheless, the two developmental processes are analogous. Note that at no time have I mentioned anything about free will. The video you made titled, Free Will My Ass, indicates you realize free will is an illusion. You know that when a person chooses to eat a particular food, the choice is determined by the taste he or she has acquired, or because the social setting, the herd instinct, overrides acquired taste and determines the choice. In all cases an individual's choice behavior is determined by a genetic endowment traceable to the evolutionary history of the species and by the environmental circumstances to which as an individual he or she has been exposed. The taste that me and my siblings acquired only differed because of the difference in personal experiences. Okay Dendrophilian, we are finally getting to the reason for this video. Let me start by asking you a question, do you stuff only candy and greasy cheeseburgers into your mouth for your developing body or do you try to maintain a somewhat healthy diet? You've probably already anticipated where I'm going with this. Still, my next question is, why do you fill your brain, which is possibly undergoing psychosexual development, with words and images that could prove not to be in the interest of your health in the long run? Drugs, such as cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, and ecstasy give lots of pleasure but are detrimental to the individual in the long run. In fact, I once had a friend, who is now dead, drug overdose, tell me that IV injection of cocaine is more intense and pleasurable than a sexual climax. Do you use such drugs for pleasure of do you realize that the lack of free will could cause you to become addicted? I'm assuming that you try to maintain a diet that is necessary for health, and you avoid drugs which can be addictive. And I'm hoping you will see that your present addiction, or obsession, whatever, indicated by porn coma, probably is not in your best interest. In the US, the age of consent has been raised in most states to between 18 and 21 years old. Therefore, sex with some 20-year-olds in the U.S. is rape, even when permission to make love is given, because laws have been enacted making it illegal for a 20-year-old to consent. Using the same line of logic, in the U.S. children are mentally raped by major corporations on a daily basis. American children are turned into, or maybe you prefer, turned out, as, insatiable consumers, consumers who are more compulsive than the most obsessive nymphomaniac. And working in schools and on nearly every corner are religious freaks who wait for the opportunity to molest the unsuspecting child with their religious myth. Furthermore, if you are a school-age atheist in this country, no way can you prevent yourself from being continually molested by these freaks. The end result of all this mind-fucking of children is they grow up to be what the rest of the world recognize as typical Americans, that is, vain and narrow-minded bigots who are naive to the causal forces by which they are manipulated. You are most likely aware of this fact and thus have a pretty good idea of how the typical American will respond to your videos. And what about all the crime in the US? The typical American is quick to use circular reasoning and tell you that crime is caused by criminals. And they will also tell you that there is no cure for crime, because criminals are born to be bad, or paradoxically, criminals freely choose to be bad, even though they could freely choose to be good. Yeah, American children are royally mind-fucked by the time they reach adulthood. Oh, by the way, I have a personal distaste for any media, movies, songs, poetry, etc. that make it seem as if pleasure can be gained by ripping females open. Marquis de Sada used false analogies to justify his misconceptions. He said the male is like a lion and the female is like an unto a lamb. And he went on to spout a bunch of rhetoric about how it is in the nature of the lion to rip the lamb to pieces. Whereas, in reality, human males and female might be comparable to lions and lionesses but not lions and lambs. I suspect such writings are inspired by an unconscious fear of the power of female sexuality. Mid-Eastern Muslims are certainly quick to kill females who are suspected of so-called promiscuousness. And a number of serial killers in the US have used the excuse that they were doing society a favor by getting rid of whores. Furthermore, I have little doubt that they believed such nonsense. All humans tend to justify their actions to themselves. So I despise all media that subtly encourage hatred or fear or otherwise undermine the reality of female sexuality. I try always to post the dialogue of my videos in the video description. If the dialogue is too long, I post the dialogue on the internet and provide a link in the description box.
Good luck in your poetry and your present development. I hope I've got you to thinking about the matter. Bye for now my Norwegian friend.